I would invite you to look for the Pew Bible in the rack in front of you. And on page 948, you will find our reading from Galatians. We've been working our way through Galatians. And last week, Pastor Dolph Singh took us through the fruits of the Spirit. Now, I just gave you a cheat sheet, so can we go through the nine fruits of the Spirit? Well, they were three, three, and three, right? So the first three fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace. Love, joy, peace. Then the next three are Patience, kindness, generosity. And the last three? Faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, can any of you pull up in your minds an image, someone you know that has these qualities about them? All of them? or maybe most of them. They're really good people, aren't they? They're people you want more of in your life, right? You see, the thing about these fruits of the Spirit, not only are they things that um, we should strive for in our own lives, yes, they're wonderful things, we should be these people, but really what this is about for me is not so much that these things are about myself, but it's about how I interact with others, right? It's a recipe for really good relationships if you have these things about you, right? These are the kind of people that you want lots of around, especially when things get tough, right? because you know they're the ones that are going to show up and be there for you, because ultimately they really care about you, right? And I think, honestly, that's what Paul is trying to get at in this letter to the Corinthians. Paul really wants the Corinthians to have that relationship with one another to care about one another, to show up when things go wrong. That's what Paul is getting at in this end of his letter to the Corinthians. Galatians, thank you. I said that wrong. I said it a couple of times too, didn't I? Good. At least I know someone's listening. (laughs) It's good, it's good. So the church in Galatia uh, really needed to work on this. And they were getting caught up in um, really just a sign of what it meant to be a part of the faith. This whole bit about circumcision was really just a physical sign of being a part of the faith. And Paul was very adamant that that's not really what it's about. I mean, you can have the sign of being a part of the faith, but if you aren't living it out, it really doesn't matter, right? Just just a sign on the outside. So I've been getting tons and tons of calls here at Grace uh, for people who have varying degree of connections to our little community here. Some people I see all the time. Some people I haven't met yet, and I've been here for a while now. (laughs) Um, But I get calls, and generally it goes something like this. Hi, Pastor. I don't know you, but uh, we just had a baby, and we were just looking to see if we could come in and get our kid done. (laughs) And... I appreciate what they're getting at. I know they're looking for baptism and, you know, at some point in their family or in their life that that was really important and that was a value that their family had. 
And so they want to continue that. And of course I say, glad, I'm glad to come and meet with you and let's talk about it and figure out when might be a good time for you to come. Um, because baptism is important, right? But when I meet with them, what I try and stress to them is, this isn't some kind of magic fairy dust that we're gonna sprinkle over your child and then all of a sudden they're gonna be a good Christian and have a happy life and everything is just gonna be hunky-dory and everything's gonna be okay. They're magically gonna get into heaven and everything is just perfect. It's not really what baptism is. It's not what it's about. For me, the fruits of the Spirit that come when the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, they change us. They make us able to interact with other people and care about other people in ways that I don't think we really are able to do on our own with our own power. I know in my life, I'm usually much too concerned about myself. It's only through the power of God that I'm able to put that aside enough to care for someone else. So let's read a little bit. At the end of chapter five, we see the works of the Spirit that we just talked about. And then my uh, paragraph title in Galatians 6 says, Bear One Another's Burdens. Paul writes, My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Now take care that you yourselves are not tempted but bear one another's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause, become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. And I think... We see that to be true. You can tell when someone's going down a bad path, right? Making bad choices in their life. And you know what's coming, right? It's not good, usually. But for those people who are seeking and searching and trying for what's best, Generally, they're headed in a better direction. But even when people are making bad choices, those ones who have community, who have connections, who have people that care about them, who have people that show up in their lives, they are the ones that tend to have a better outcome, right? Maybe we have been there. Maybe that person was us. And it was the people who showed up, who gave us the hand, hand to hold, shoulder to cry on, the friend to call who knew somebody, who got us the connection that maybe got us the job. That's the body of Christ at work, friends. That's what it looks like to be community, right? To see somebody, to have your eyes open enough to see, to have your ears open enough to hear, 
and then to follow through, right? Not only see them, but care about them. Have any of you had that happen in your life where somebody has seen you? It matters. It makes a real difference. And that's what Paul is getting at. It's not just some physical sign, some symbol, some magic fairy dust. Yeah, that's all well and good, and you can do it if you want. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a pastor of the church. We only have two sacraments. Anybody know what they are? Baptism Baptism and communion. So clearly, it's really hard for me to say it's not really about baptism because baptism is important. (laughs) But baptism isn't the end of the story. Being baptized really is here or there if you don't follow through with being a part of the community. That's what I try and tell these parents when I meet with them. What's important for me is that we get to be a part of your child's life. That you get to come here, we get to teach them things about God and Jesus and show them what it means to be a member of a community that cares, that shows up, right? That's what Paul is getting at. He continues on in verse 11. See what large letters I make when I am writing with my own hand. It's really me that's writing it here, folks. It's really Paul. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try and compel you to be circumcised. Only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised themselves do not obey the law. But they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May may I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything but in a new creation is everything. Friends, it is the work of the Holy Spirit through us. It is the work of the Holy Spirit through us that makes that new creation. It's neither baptism or unbaptism. It is the new creation, right? It is God's work. This font right here, this is just a physical sign, something that we can hold and touch, a promise of God for our lives. That's what this water is. God's word through the water, God's spirit in our lives is what makes all the difference. I pray that God's spirit may flow through you, may fill you to overflowing. That these fruits of the spirit may fill you. That you may use these things to reach out with eyes wide open to see your neighbor, to see the people around you. You may reach out, bring the love that is in this community and bring it to the pain of the world, that there may be pain no more. Amen.